Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia extends its travel restrictions as the WHO encourages countries to step up efforts against the COVID-19. St. Lucia is among regional CIP countries welcoming positive IMF reviews on the program and cultivating a body culture in the classroom. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. St. Lucia has extended its travel restrictions to include five more countries as the new coronavirus, COVID-19, continues to spread across the globe. St. Lucia's Department of Health and Wellness notes an escalation in the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 internationally, as well as the spread to 29 countries outside of China, including 23 deaths. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma george elaborated on the new restrictions. As a result, the Department of Health and Wellness imposes an extension of the travel restrictions to Hong Kong, Republic of Korea, Japan, Italy, and Singapore as of Wednesday, February 26 at 12 a.m. Any returning national to St. Lucia with a travel history to any countries mentioned above will be quarantined for a period of 14 days. The Department of Health and Wellness, we also discourage all non-essential travel to the places listed above. The government of St. Lucia commends the Chinese government in the efforts to manage and contain the outbreak and will continue working to strengthen our local capacities against this global threat. So far, Hong Kong has reported 74 confirmed cases and two deaths. The Republic of Korea, 763 confirmed cases and seven deaths. Japan, 144 confirmed cases, one death. Italy, 124 confirmed cases with two deaths. And Singapore, 89 confirmed cases. Activities celebrating St. Lucia's 41st anniversary of independence continue Thursday, 27 February with the Goodwill Ambassadors' Investiture Ceremony. The Goodwill Ambassador Program was created to allow citizens who have achieved international acclaim in their respective fields to leverage that status to the benefit of their homeland. Janelle Norville caught up with the nominated ambassadors at the recently held Prime Minister's Independence Ball. The St. Lucia Goodwill Ambassadors Program is proposed as a tool to actualize the national cultural policy in a number of key areas. The individuals appointed are citizens of St. Lucia who have achieved international acclaim and the overall objective of the program is to serve as a catalyst for socio-economic transformation and the development of human capital in all sectors related to the creative arts and the industries, sports, visual arts, gastronomy and music. The ambassadors are expected to represent St. Lucia locally, regionally, and internationally by leveraging their profile and celebrity status to tap into access for growth and forge strategic partnerships between the Cultural Development Foundation and other related agencies. Internationally renowned music producer and engineer Gordon Commissioner Williams was appointed as one of the Goodwill Ambassadors. Williams speaking at the Prime Minister's Independence Ball indicated what an honor it was for him. It's an unbelievable honor. I think it's the next phase in my career. And as I said when I was speaking, it started for me in St. Lucia, which a lot of people don't know about me in the industry, that I'm actually from St. Lucia, that my family is from St. Lucia and not Jamaica, which is what a lot of people think because I've worked so much with the Marley family and done a lot of Jamaican music. So it really means um, it's a, it's, a, it's a full circle for me, and I really look forward to giving back to the youth, to giving back to the country, and, uh, and to help bringing back some of what St. Lucia gave to me. Now I want to give it back. Williams announced that he has decided to bring his academy, the Lala Bella Academy, to St. Lucia. Lala Bella Academy is a non-profit that emphasizes education and social entrepreneurship through the arts to foster positive growth and personal development, as well as knowledge and craftsmanship in various art forms in youth and young adults. He also highlights the areas of priority for him. Education, talent development, I want to put a recording studio here. No, I will put a recording studio here. My production company and distribution so that we can give local artists access to the outside world. I mean, we all have access now because of the inter internet, but 
entertainment is a tricky field that, you know, it's entertainment. It's entertainment all the way around. Even in the deals, it's entertainment. So you have to understand that. And I think I can bring, you know, hopefully I'll be able to bring that piece that's missing. International sculptor Jalim Yudovic was also appointed Goodwill Ambassador. The title of Your Excellency will be conferred on the Goodwill Ambassadors as well as the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold. They will also be issued with an official or diplomatic passport as awarded by cabinet and a decorated red laser passé signed by the Governor General. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. St. Lucia's Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, and Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, have been mulling over the future of Winfresh. Prime Minister Chastney and Honorable Joseph on Tuesday, 25th February, attended a one-day meeting in St. Vincent and the Grenadines with Winfresh executives. St. Vincent's Prime Minister, Honorable Ralph Gonzalez, and Minister of Agriculture, Industry, Forestry, Fisheries and Rural Transformation, Honorable Saboto Caesar, also attended the meeting. In his New Year's address to the nation, Honorable Chastney spoke about the support and incentives that government has been giving to farmers and noted that in 2016, banana production increased despite the challenges from natural disasters. The Prime Minister indicated then that government is actively working on new markets and discussions remain on the way with Winfresh to strengthen the company's operation and expand its export base. Winfresh is owned by the governments of Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia and Dominica. St. Lucia is among regional citizenship by investment CIP countries, welcoming positive statements made by the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, on the impact of the CIP to the socio-economic structure of participating countries. The IMF recognizes the program as a significant contributor of revenues and it lauds the program for assisting in reducing national debts as well as its contribution to the country's gross domestic product. We hear more in this OECS Commission feature produced by Orange Media Group and narrated by Ernie St. Catherine. The IMF comments come at a time when these CIP programs are being viewed as controversial with skepticism by the United States and Europe. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Alan Chastney, welcomes the IMF comments. For an institution like the International Monetary Fund to acknowledge and recognize the positive contribution that CIP has made is obviously very strong. And it's a, it's a resounding endorsement um, of these programs. This program has a future, has a role to play in the development of a smaller um, island developing state, and particularly the ones here in the Eastern Caribbean. The importance of the CIP to the islands cannot be understated. For instance, CIP in St. Kitts and Dominica have contributed in excess of 50% of these countries' GDP. Um, so we've come here to talk about... Uh, Bruno Lecuyer, CEO of the Investment Migration Council, the Worldwide Association of Investor Migration Professionals, says his organization welcomes the IMS recognition of the positive impact of CIP programs on our small states. I'm delighted that investment migration as an innovative source of debt-free capital has been recognized by the IMF. The liquidity injection to Caribbean economies creates significant societal and sovereign value. The IMF report also came with some clear advice to the islands. It has called for coordination and collaboration of the island citizenship by investment programs. The governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy Antoine, has also weighed in on the issue of collaboration and harmonization. He is of the view that the countries must come together to agree on pricing that reflect the precious and exclusive value of our CBI programs and reciprocity on denied applications, among others. Prime Minister Chastney of St. Lucia agrees with the ECCB governor's call for harmonization. This harmonization um, and common due diligence. It means if somebody is rejected in St. Lucia, they should not be accepted in one of the other Eastern Caribbean islands. I've been a, a proponent to the fact that I think that maybe the CIP program should be run out of the OECS Secretariat 
and that this become a citizenship program for the OECS because the benefits that people get are for the OECS. A key player in this harmonization is the Citizenship by Investment Program Association, CEPA. As a grouping of, of, of CEOs of, of this program, we, we are fully supportive of the move towards harmonization and we are willing to work with the, the, the OECS Commission as well as the central bank to ensure that this does happen. Leading CIP Global Marketer Henley & Partners have been longtime proponents of a harmonized CIP program for the OECS. It is indeed encouraging that a body as auspicious as the, the IMF in its 2019 concluding mission statement of its staff report would recognize the importance of these programs to the economies of these small islands, where apart from tourism, it is playing a significant role in foreign direct investment inflows. That encouragement comes with uh, a bit of advice though, that we continue to work on improving the transparency and governance of, of those programs, given their importance to these economies. And in that regard, the role of the East Caribbean Central Bank uh, and signaling its intent to be more involved in these programs has good stead for the future. There is an air of optimism among leaders of the islands, their CIP bodies and global marketers like Henley and Partners, derived from the IMF statements. But they are also aware of the sobering advice from the ECCB and IMF to ensure that the programs are unified and well run to ensure their sustainability and viability. And this is the NTN Nightly. We'll be back in a moment. I am a child. I am HIV positive. I am a Muslim. I'm a journalist. I am gay. I am a political activist. I am differently able. I am Chinese. And me, I'm a little plus size. The first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance of individuality and differences within all of us. A message brought to you by the Department of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. St. Lucian author, educator and artiste Lovely Sheridan is working towards cultivating a body culture in the classroom to complement the ongoing Body Ambassadors Body Bench program. Anissi Antoine has the details. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, in collaboration with Lovely Sheridan, hosted a training session for teachers. The training program, entitled Creating a Buddy Culture in the Classroom, formed part of the Buddy Ambassadors and Buddy Bench anti-bullying campaign. Joycelyn Eugene, Coordinator of Guidance Counseling at the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, explained the importance of the training session. It's important for us to have this training because we have recognized that um, there are reports of bullying in our schools among children and um, it's also a part of helping children develop conflict resolution, ways of interacting, communicating when they have a disagreement and but more importantly practicing kindness and so the angle of this workshop is not necessary to speak about the bullying but speaking about the type of character that we want to develop which is a character of kindness and tolerance and inclusiveness with children. Miss Eugene noted that the training equips the teachers with the right tools and tips to help develop a positive character in students. Some of what we are doing is actually giving children an opportunity to communicate some of the concerns and some of the difficulties that they have in school and helping them now to find strategies in which they would be able to respond in a more positive way you know to some of the conflicts that they have with the positive discipline that the teachers are doing i think the buddy ambassadors program helps children look out for one another which is the other thing it's important for them to have their peer-to-peer -peer relationships peer-to-peer support and of course 
um, they also take responsibility for calling on each other when a person is not living up the character of the Buddy Ambassador. The Buddy Ambassador and Buddy Bench campaign was designed by author and youth advocate Lovely Sheridan. Sheridan, who based the campaign of her book, Be a Buddy, Not a Bully, says that the objective of the workshop is to raise awareness within teachers and to provide support in creating a buddy culture in schools. In terms of communication, how we communicate to children, how we create the classroom. What type of classroom? How is our classroom set up? Is it a buddy environment? Is this a bu uh, an environment that is set up for children where they feel like, hey, this is a happy place, this is a great place where I feel included, I feel like I have a friend, I feel like this is a happy place to go to. Um, in terms of how teachers communicate with children when children report um, issues of bullying, how do they respond to it? Do they have a zero tolerance policy, a policy at school where the children feel safe and they feel like they can go to the chi um, children, they are approachable? Um, in terms of uh, students feeling like, you know what, my teacher cares about me. Do they feel cared about? Do they feel like they have a platform where they could reach out and share hey, if something is going on and they could share with others. The training program for teachers took place on Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. I was raped by my uncle when I was five. I was raped by my spouse. I was raped by my nanny. I was raped by a family friend. He said he wanted to correct me. I was raped by my download manager. I, 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 I'm HIV positive. positive. Stand up, speak out. out. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Merci au temps, Nisha. Merci, Madame, département qui est responsable de formation au gouvernement de la GIS. À ce moment, la télévision nationale pays à NTN, qui est Nouvelle en Creole. Pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Plusieurs organisations des affaires sociales qui est présent dans le grand bal Premier ministre de pour observer le 41 anniversaire du pays en espoir des bénéfices du pays recevoir. Le grand affaire est le premier journée d'indépendance le 22 février 2010, en pavillon en Redry à Rodney Bay. Plusieurs cent peuples de l'ICI, et parmi eux, c'était les officiers diplomatiques, qui ont assisté au grand spectacle pour supporter une initiative charitable et puis satisfaction qui a supporté pour l'occasion l'occasion nécessaire. Grand bal là te porté noir une soirée de la forêt et malgré les patrons te a porté toutes sortes qualités modèles des habillements des habillements principale raison pour grand faire ça là c'était effort de charitable. Trois organisations trouvées choisies pour recevoir bénéfice initiatif charitable ça là et qui aussi crisis center c'est le ci qui est ça pour aider à corriger la situation des abusements et fournir des conseils particulièrement pour les femmes, Boys Training Center, un Massad, qui est une institution pour procurer des de bon la vie sociale pour les jeunes garçons, et Mongouge Club 60, qui a occupé des affaires de grands citoyens. Le Premier ministre de l'Union européenne, Alain Chasné, déclare que si le grand bal a amassé assez l'argent, plein, c'est pour bâtir un laboratoire des sciences à Villevieux-Fort. Selon le Premier ministre Chasné, l'initiative est là pour assister les étudiants à l'école Saka de Villevieux-Fort, qui a continué à performer à des degrés d'excellence en études de sciences. Le ministre des Affaires et des Étrangères, en cette ici, honorable Sarah Flood Bobre, remarque que le Premier ministre Chasné a délivré l'adresse et l'indépendance de l'année. 
ka wa force tem la ke nou tout ad ansanm sa ne pou fè osi et puis les ambassades lòt peyi ki ka supporte se le si madam bo pou deklare ki yo si ka jwe yo wòl ki twa zo pòta pou ede peyi a fè progwe ron stevens yo gwek de business ki te delive gwan adres la pou swawe a komplimante de gwe devlopman ki se le si Jes piyansi, depi pe ya touve edependans an ane 1969, ya ajoute ki, ini tout espoa ki se le si ka y kontine pou fè pogwe a se l'ane pou vene. Nan de pase, gwan bal pre minis la, te an masi plis ki 600 mil dola, ek se espoa les organizate ki yo ka y fè plis di sa l'ane sa la. Nan de pase, 16 organizasyon touve benefis. Wezilta egzaminasyon ki te fet asou de Chinwa ki te ambas yweksyon ene koz disipsyon de maladi korona ka moutwe ki yo pa afekte pe maladi ya. Minister de Sante te pwen aksyon finisman simen pase kom yo te touve wa po konsane de Chinwa ki te antwe an peyi ya ki minister te konsane pe te ka soufe epi maladi sa la. Selon chef ofisi medikal, Dr. Sharon Belma George, Samdi li 20 febriye 2002, les autorite te touve yo apò ki de Chinwa ki yo si se sitoyen se tlisi te an tre apè ya apre yo voyaj od lang titè ek yo te ka pote sin de l'histoire maladi korona. Pa konsekans, yo te nesese pou plase de individi sa la an bas yweksyon konsay ya. Yo te touve quarantine, sa vle di, yo plase yon ade yon institusyon sante kote yi pate ni le chan libla pou ale vini ne pot kote Sa se an efor pou te proteje publik la, ek lot la yo te plase dan yon cham kote yi pate sa ni pies kontak epi pies lot moun. Selon Dr. Belma George, yo te kondwe l'examinasyon asou de edividi ya ek vre tes la pou ajans de sante publik kawib la, sa se kafa. Dr. Belma George anose ki se tes la moutwe ki pies se edividi ya pa efekte, ek a wezelta de sa, de soutou wite sa te te predisizyon pou kite yo viwe. Akazyo. Bon, kom wete pometou, pli bon nè an si menan. Nou kaj kontine jodi ya, epi adres Prem Minis Onyab Alen Chasne pou selebrasyon anivansè edipadans 2020. Prem Minis Chasne fè publik la kompren mene peyi a jal reziste an ba plizye dezas kon dezas natyuel, dezas ekonomik ek politikal, ek kontine pou goumen pou ende koyi ale douva. Pwè minis chasne, avwe ki, sa se pas ki set li si ni apil wezilians ek kapasite pou ko pou yansam pou abat challenge ki ka menase nou kon yon peyi. Imasyonen siklon Allen, Movetan Debi, siklon Thomas, ek trof la la vey nouel 2013. Pwè minis chasne deklare ki, magwe tout se twa kas ma ekonomi ki konyen set li si twe fò atan pase, peyi a te kapap pou te fè progwe pou bese problem travay, ek det, ek pou empouve asou de gwe sa nou jabati. Premene chasne, masyone pou gwe an biznes touristik, ek abilite sekte agrikol ek biznes de potikte pou augmente. Premene chasne, masyone pou gwe an biznes touristik, ek abilite sekte agrikol ek biznes de potikte pou augmente. Premene chasne, masyone pou gwe an biznes touristik, nou tout si pose kopwe pou fè sa posib. E fè yon apel pou set lisye kontine pou respekte, ek ame yon alot, ek osi peyi nou, respekte les otovite, Ek loa peyi ya, premene chasne, kouye asou chofè loto, pou kondwi epi pli pou konsyon asou chime peyi ya, pou kondwi epi pli la tewe pou la vi fwe ek se, set li si. E fè publik la kompon, si katite, si katite jen nes ki ja mò an e kos di aksidan loto. I di ki, lani twop aksidan trafik ki ka pwen la vi jen gaso ek fi, ek sa ka fè nou pwen pen an pil talan an peyi ya, paski moun pa ni wespe, e pa ka pwen pies pou konsyon. Pwen minis la, wè gwe te de gwe la pen sa ka pote pou la fami. Pwen minis chasne deklare ki sa ni pou do bout. Ek se konsa nou akman bout nouvel la, mou ka mèsyo otan pou ka gade, mou ka bar yon invitasyon pou jene pi mou akon si de konsa ve la vi, den gaye pwese to alot nouvel akwe yol. Apre sa, mou ka vi yon pwese to nichel. Messi Opil Primus, and here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy skies occasionally becoming cloudy with some scattered showers. 
the Atlantic High Pressure System will continue to generate light to moderate easterly winds across the Eastern Caribbean during the forecast period. The remnants of a frontal trough will continue to cause some cloudiness and scattered showers over the region during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 5.37 p.m. and will be low again at 11.34 p.m. The tide for VFO Bay was high at 6.44 p.m. and will be low again at 1.01 a.m. The seas moderate with waves of 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 6.21 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.